Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 33 and I'm going to discuss integration by parts, or the first rule in integration by parts. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstories.com. The previous video to which this is or to which is relevant to this is number 29 where I discussed the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now I urge you immediately not to dismiss this video, uh, perhaps you've already dismissed it, um, but integration by parts isn't as straightforward as perhaps you think it is. And in a moment I'll be progressing to integration by parts using the product rules I've discussed in the previous videos. And uh, I guarantee you, you will require to come back looking at this video at some stage. And also this video is standalone, so of course if you're doing anything else this, is, uh, this, is, this video will also work. But it's, it, it's, it's aimed at using uh, the integration by parts on the product rules for electromagnetism. So what I'm going to do first of all is prove it. So, let's say, for example, we take the x derivative of a product of functions f and g. So the product rule is very straightforward. It just says you have f del g del x and you have g del f del x. Well, I suppose it really, they really should be total derivatives because it's, uh, it's, only, it's only a function of x, but we'll leave it like that for the moment. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate the whole thing. Okay, so we're going to integrate the whole thing, let's say, between arbitrary um, arbitrary limits a and b. So we're going to have del or d dx, excuse me, of f and g dx is equal to the integral between a and b again, f dg dx dx plus between a and b of g df dx dx. Now, just to point out, I know I've written my partials here, but I suppose what people say is if your function, let's say f is a function of only, let's say y is a function of only one variable x, then we use the what, what, what are called the total derivatives, d dx. However, if it's, if it's a function of more than one variable, let's say it's a function of x and z, let's say, right? Then you don't have total derivatives, you have partial derivatives, del, del x and del, del z. So I've actually been dealing with partials for quite a while, so that's why I wrote the partials at the top. It'll give you the same answer, I suppose, really, but it, that's just a matter of convention. So, now we're looking at integration by parts. So, what we need to do is go back to the previous video where I discussed the fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm just going to do a small bit of, of revision. So, the fundamental theorem of calculus says if you integrate between a and b of the derivative of a function, let's say the function is f, I, if I integrate the derivative of f, it's the same as just finding the value of my function f at the limits. A, uh, we'll say are subtracting the, the values at the limits. That's what it says. So the, the integral of a derivative is the same is equal to the value of the function at the boundary. Not the derivative of the function, but the function itself at the boundary. Okay, and you know, it's, it's one of these things when, when, I, when I, I remember seeing this in the first year calculus course and I just kind of dismissed it going like that's, that, that makes perfect sense. But it's strange when you start starting to use this theorem in other places, you, you uh, you kind of start to doubt where it came from, but um, you, you, need, you really need to think about this, so it's, it's quite a subtle argument. Or another way of writing this is, if we write another function, function let's say capital F of X, and we integrate a DX, well that's going to be F of B minus small f of A. So the point here is, in order to integrate the function capital F of X, what we need to do is think up of another function whose derivative is capital F of X. So we'll say, we, t we think of small f, we say, we, we plug it in like that. So that's how you integrate a function. You think up of another function whose derivative is the function you're trying to integrate. So there are two, you know, there are two, um, the same ways of writing it. So the integral of a derivative over an interval is given by the value of the function at the endpoints, or the otherwise known as the boundaries. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just actually going to write that in here. Just bear with me now, right? So the fundamental theorem says if you integrate uh, df dx dx is just the value at the boundary b minus the value of the boundary at a. All right. So now it's time to employ our fundamental theorem and see where we can go. So let's rewrite this. So we have the, in the integral from a to b of d dx of the product of the functions f and g integrated dx. But by the fundamental theorem of calculus, 
we have the derivative of a function. The, the function in this case is f times g. So it's just going to be the function evaluated b minus the function evaluated a. So it's f times g evaluated at between b and a. That's another way of writing that. Okay, so what we really have here, another way of writing is f, let's say, um, f at x is equal to uh, b, f at x is equal to, or that's g, excuse me, x is equal to b minus f x is equal to a uh, times g at x is equal to a. That's the same thing, all right? So that's our boundary term. But, so that's invoking the fundamental theorem. But we already know what it's equal to up here, so we rewrite what we have up top. So it's f times dg dx dx plus the integral again from a to b of g df dx dx, like that. So basically, integration by parts is just rearranging, rearranging this where we have the integral from a to b of our function f multiplied by the derivative of g, in this case dx, is equal to minus, and I'm actually going to write that minus in a different color because that's important, minus the integral from a to b of g times df dx, integrated dx, minus the boundary, or excuse me, plus the boundary term, in this case it's f times g like that. Okay, and that is our integration by parts. So what does it mean? Like you might look at that and say, okay, that's fair enough. What it actually means is when you must integrate the product of a function with the derivative of another. So in this case we're integrating the product of our function f and the derivative of g. You may transfer the derivative to g in this case, but it's, it'll cost you a minus sign and a boundary term. Alright? So the usual way to write it is is we swap, we'll say we have the, the, the boundary term first. So I'll put it in, in more, more um, we'll say more common notation. The more common notation would be if I integrate a u and v prime, let's say dx, the answer is putting the boundary term first. It's the product integrated, let's say a to b, or excuse me, evaluated at a and b, minus the integral of v u prime dx. Okay, and that's, that's the same thing. This is the more use, uh, that is the more, I would say useful, but it's the more usual way of writing it. Now, in terms of your vector calculus, the way to remember it is this way and not this way, because this is the easy one. And what you need to, in my opinion, drill into your head is that you're integrating the product of a normal function and a, the derivative of another, and you're able to swap the derivative, and it'll cost you a boundary term and a minus sign. That's what you need to think about, okay? So in the next video, what I'm going to do is an example of using integration, integration by parts. And thereafter, I'm going to invoke the product rules. So if you're watching this and you're not doing electromagnetism, then you should also watch the next video. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.